Event Collection versus Cohort, Tutorial 26. For additional insight in cohorts and their use in evaluating accountable health care, please read Riddles in Accountable Health Care by Aron Bellin, available through Amazon as paperback or Kindle. Until now, we've always spoken about a cohort. To remind you, a cohort is a group of medical record numbers with an index date time associated with it. This group has each medical record number recognized only once. Sometimes, however, what you're interested in is not the unique individual, but some event. Sometimes you're interested in the hospitalization as a unit of analysis. You want to know how many hospitalizations there were in a year. Such a question may have a person represented multiple times in the group. That is, if you take a look at all the hospital discharges, a person may be discharged more than once. Now, you may want to do analyses on the hospitalization time to repeat hospitalization, finding the first hematocrit in a hospitalization. So you need to be able to create something that behaves like a cohort in terms of all the analytic objects of the study designer, but that in fact allows an individual to be seen more than once. Interestingly enough, each of these hospitalizations is linked only to another hospitalization of the same person. So there is a natural relationship of identity of person between the multiple events. But in fact, you want the multiple events to be represented and not just the first or the last. To do that, you have to become familiar with the notion of an event collection. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a new folder, as we always do. We're going to call the folder event collection. We're going to save and exit this. We're going to hover over the event collection, right click. Instead of building a cohort, we're going to build an event collection. Let's name this Discharges 2010 Alive, greater than or equal to 65. Let's take a look at our event canvas. Already you notice some differences. If you remember, the cohorts always began with a C. An event collection, as you see, has an EC. The index event line in the event collection always had latest or earliest. But the event collection has all. This all is going to be very important and all those recommendations I made to you to point to the specific line that you're interested in is going to be extremely important in event collections as will become clear very soon. Let's actually build a group of discharges alive. Discharges alive. We're going to use all. The event is going to be a new event definition. It's going to be discharges alive. We've done this before. We're going to select inpatient discharge. We're going to add a condition. The patient has a disposition equals to expired, not. So they did not expire. Update and close. Update and close. So they were discharged alive. And the duration is going to be the year 2010. One one ten. Two one one eleven. We're also requiring the demographics have age greater than or equal to sixty five. Discharge alive, 2010, age greater than or equal to 65, and all. And we're having all of any. Now we're going to build it. There are 28,959 discharges alive. Now we want to ask a question. We want to ask a question. How many of these discharges resulted in a readmission in 30 days? Okay, okay, let's add a within condition. Add within inpatient 
admit. This time we want the earliest new event definition. Inpatient admit. Zero to 30 days after the discharge. Update and close. So we have discharges alive in 2010, age greater than or equal to 65, and with an inpatient admission within zero to 30 days after being discharged alive. Let's build that. And we have 12,420. So the question is, do you think that of the original 28,959, we actually had 12,420 readmissions? That's almost 50% 30-day readmission rate. There's something wrong with that. Now, what is this count of 12,420? Here's where it becomes important. Notice the index event is all of any. So it's all the discharges that had an inpatient admission within 30 days, and it's the count of inpatient admissions as well. So you're getting a double hit. You're getting the count of the discharges originally and a count of those inpatient admissions that qualified them. You have to be very careful. So if you want to have all the discharges that qualified, you could point to the discharge line. If you wanted all the inpatient admits that qualified them, you can point to the inpatient admit line. But you can't point to all of any, otherwise you'll get the count of all of these. Let's edit this and make this point clear. So we're going to have, instead of all of any, we're going to have all of discharges alive, the first line. Update and close. Now we're going to build it. And you get 6,210. Now let's point to the inpatient admit line, the second line. And let's build it again. And again, we get 6,210. So basically, by counting all, we were doubling the count. Very important to know what you're pointing to. But now that you have these discharges, you can actually do, or these admissions, you can do all sorts of analyses, list methods, time to outcomes, just as you did before, where these elements become the index dates from which the analyses are being done. This is how you build an event collection from scratch. You notice? Suppose you already had a cohort, in this case, the male pneumonia 2010 patients, and you wanted to turn it into an event collection. You wanted to make it, instead of the first, you wanted all the mail admissions. Well, what you do is you right-click on that, and you choose, as your option, Copy to Event Collection. What you see here is the event collection has been created. It has zero MRNs, because only the rules have been created. If you open it up, you notice the all that's there. But the all only changes the index event line. If you want to also change the first condition line, you have to do that manually, which I now do. Now I have all in my index event line and all in my condition line. And I build. Notice how it gave it a new name. There are 812 pneumonia patients. There are 812 discharges of males with pneumonia in 2010. If we take a look at the male admissions, there were 762 unique individuals who were admitted.
I would just be a little careful here and take a look at the actual definition and realize that we had the expired group as well. So that were 812 admissions of patients who did not get expired. There's 762 people who were admitted who did not get expired. In any event, in order to turn cohort into event collection, you have to use the command copy to event collection, then open it up and change the condition lines. Well, if you have an event collection, you can use it in study designer as you would use a cohort. Make sure you're pointing to the right line when you're building this.